Hi, this is a video on how to repair the blower motor on the Mercedes-Benz. This happens to be an S-Class, uh, very similar to the E-Class. I've done this several times. Uh, only it's minor differences, but overall it's the same principle. So what has happening is this is the blower motor, which I have removed from the uh, housing. Um, I'll show you what, where it came from. Under the passenger seat, uh, in the front where the leg rest, uh, leg rest area is, there is a panel, and underneath the panel is a space where the blower motor fits. Just for interest sake, there are the carbon filters, carbon block filters. Uh, all right, so I've removed the the um, blower motor. Um, I'll show you how I reinstall it. Um, which will also explain how to uninstall it because I've already done that part of the, the process. Alright, so this is the blower motor. The symptoms for this uh, problem was it was making a screeching sound. It was going... Right, so when you turn it on, no matter what uh, volume of air you wanted, um, it was making a screeching sound. So what we needed to do was to disassemble the housing. Now, just to show you how it was, this was on top, like that. Okay, so to disassemble it, there is a screw here. Took the screw off and slid this out. For interest sake, this is the regulator. Uh, this is the uh, regulator, there's a cap, some coils, and the plug to the um, motor and the regulator sits here. Now, to open this motor, what I needed to do, there were lips on each one of these. I don't know if you can see in the camera here. Let's see. Yeah. I needed to get the back of this motor off, so I ground down each section here just with a angle grinder and then I used a screwdriver and pulled this cup cap off and included in the cap is the let's get it out there we go that's inside the the motor now included in the cap are the terminals and the brushes so the first thing I noticed is on this unit is the these uh, copper links were no longer um, tight they haven't soldered them so I actually ground it down and I soldered it so that's a good good step because there's a lot of vibration and it, it's probably arcing on the one side here so I've just soldered all of these you can see there this one is already fastened uh, uh, soldered there so I've soldered there 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 and there the next thing is clean out this it's not actually a bearing, it's a steel on steel. Clean it out. I put some thinners and I cleaned out the, the, the um, spindle. Right, I then used boiling hot water, I put thinners and I cleaned out all the um, uh, spindle and uh, commutator area. And um, obviously it can't turn now because there's magnets inside which are holding it. You also want to clean out the top here. It's quite hard. Look, you'd have to loosen this to get this covering off. My advice is do not drop this, do not dent it. This thing has been balanced in the factory. It's got uh, cuts here or whatever. Um, yeah, there it's been balanced so that this thing spins correctly. So I don't, I don't want to fiddle with this uh, unit because it is in balance. So it is possible to service this thing without removing the the actual fan or the blower itself so what I needed to do was inspect the inspect the, uh, the, the the brushes now how the brushes work okay there's the brushes now you can see there's the brush now there's another one in there you can see it's very worn down so this is an old blower now it's spring-loaded now obviously to hold this with your finger and to put it back on the unit is almost impossible 
So what you do is you take a screwdriver and you recess the the brush deep inside and eventually after a certain amount it almost clicks in there which is very helpful and it, there it is at the back so what what the, the designers of this motor did is they made a hole there so when you put this back in there's a gap for you to press the brush through so don't worry about uh, when you pull this thing off that the brushes fly out because it is quite easy to push them back in and when you reinstall this cap you can just uh, tap the brush and it will the spring uh, the leaf spring here will then allow it to um, uh, uh, Go back into its uh, uh, um, Spring position now there is something that looks like a type of washer This guy is a bit worn out. So what I did is you can actually take this this um, bush here can actually come out you just press it out literally with you with a screwdriver it's not tight now it it's unlikely it will come out this way it comes it comes out this way there are some uh, pressure um, p uh, metal strips here to hold it in place um, but it does come out so I've I had taken that out and I cleaned it with thinners and I also just filed it down filed it down with glass paper or sandpaper the what a 1400 grit very very um, smooth so this has been filed down and it is very very smooth now I also then put a tiny bit of um, wheel bearing grease okay so that was serviced then uh, just to going back to this washer. I'm, I'm sure this is just an insulation washer just so that the commutator does not uh, ever touch the steel there now coming to this commutator now what you're looking at is a Nice and clean Version of how it was now. I'm not sure where this screeching noise exactly came from but I do think that the commutator was very, very gouged. So what I did is I took fine sandpaper and sanded this down to bring out the copper. Now, just a note, generally we don't file down commutators. But if you take a fine sandpaper and you just smooth it over so that the, um, the uh, brush can have uh, a better contact on the the commutator then it will help the conductivity now what I did is to test that I put this unit on a bench and you know before this motor would start turning we needed at least 1.3 amps after cleaning up the commutator sanding it down the motor started to turn at 0.86 amps just showing you how the conductivity is a very important aspect of the motor so clean out the commutator file it down gently with uh, some sandpaper um, try and get it flat again because obviously with the brushes have worn some of this copper then once you have done that take a blade and just or a screwdriver and just run it along just so that no filing gets caught in between there and shorts out the uh, each uh, each um, uh, copper strip here of this commutator so what I'm doing is I'm just creating a separation between these because some metal filings can get caught in there right so that is done now it is time to reinstall the uh, the end cap and what I recommend you just putting a little bit of grease I'm just using standard uh, castrol wheel bearing grease and do not over grease it um, just a little bit of grease there now the reason why it goes in there is if you look on the other side of the cap this thing is raised and there it's recessed so that uh, provides the mating surface so I've just put a little bit of grease again as I said don't go crazy and we definitely do not want this grease on the commutator and there we go now I'll just get my cloth Right, that is sufficient. Now it's time to put this guy back on. Right, so what you've got to do is you've got to align it. Got to align it. Um, there we go. And you can see how it's, it, it clips in actually perfectly. 
there's no reason why you should have to force this can you if you have a look here you'll see it's totally snug and there as well snug so we, we do not need to force anything now but however i had to ground down these lips here which were actually holding this cap on so now in order to hold this cap on in part two of this repair i'm going to have to hammer down this bend it over and i'll do the opposite side and i will hammer it there just to bend it over now the problem is you can't hammer it like that because you're going to damage the 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 head so you've got to hammer it on a raised surface a brick or something so i'm going to demonstrate how to just close this unit and then remember what i said is once you're done you just press in there and the brush will uh will rest on the commutator so i'm just going to get a brick and a hammer Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to tap it with the hammer and bend it, literally bending it onto the uh, end cap. What you can do is you can separate this unit from the casing which I've now done uh, it also gives you a good um, a good view of how to grease this section this this uh, bushing here allows it to the motor to the spindle to have a bit of movement uh, okay and there's that washer right now that washer really goes over there now what we want to do is, we, because I had to grind down these little lips, um, I now need to to fasten them. But I just want to open them a little bit, so that when I do put it on, it will be a bit easier. So I'm just opening it. Right, now what we want to do is we want to put this like so. It, there is a, it's not just putting it anywhere you want. There, there are specific, uh, I think there's a specific way. Just want to align it correctly. There you go. Now we just need to tap it in. You've got to align these plastic pins. They are plastic pins. You see one, two, three, four. So it's important to align those. Yeah. There we go. They are now in alignment. Where's that little one.
interpret. No, 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 no. Steve, I thought you stopped videoing. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Right, so after hammering these, you can see how they are fastened down there. Must be flush, as you can see. Now, what you need to do is you take a screwdriver and you press the spring, the brush through. So that brush is now on the motor, and this one is also on the motor. It uh, on the commutator. It fell through while I was hammering on the. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, the brushes are now quite, quite uh, tightly on that uh, commutator. Then I also just added some grease there. And I also, it's quite hard, but you, you can add some grease there. You just put it on a screwdriver. You lift the, this thing up, it moves. And you put the grease on the edge of the screwdriver. You turn it, and the beauty about grease is when you turn it, it actually sucks the grease in as what's happening there now if you want you can use contact chemi uh, to just to make good contact on the the uh, uh, commutator just to make sure there's no grease is interfering there and i will bring some contact chemi to show what it looks like right 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 Contacts Kemi, I, I love this stuff. You, I have already sprayed it in there, but I'm just going to demonstrate. You just need to spray it so that it actually, uh, the commutator, I don't know if you can actually see in there. But let's see. You just spray it on the commutator, and what it does is it just um, it takes away the grease and it improves the conductivity. Let's have a look at it. Yeah. And if you're feeling really energetic, you can uh, wipe off any dirt in, in there, but it's not necessary. Right, now we need to reassemble, and this is the part that was missing from the video, is there's no disassembly. I mean, there's no disassembly, there's only reassembly, so I'm going to show you how to reassemble. There's one screw there. Uh, as you can see, this thing is going to go on top like that, but you've got to match up the screw to the... Uh, screw hole there, so it's actually not that way, it is that way. Now we just want to, there we go, turn this a bit, right, there is the screw hole. Now I'm going to just get that screw. Look at the thread, it's different to the rest, it's a very fine thread and it's a Torx, it's a T10, okay, you can, uh, so my socket set isn't close, let's tighten it, no need to be, go no need to go crazy here, yeah? there we go, that's tight enough. Now, 
that's called Boo Boo. The wire I did not, uh, I, I screwed it on while it was coming out the side, that was incorrect. I just want to see if I can squeeze it through here or I'll have to, um, I don't want to break this thing. Okay, it is fine. There's the wire. We need that. That one plugs into here, like that. There we go. So, this unit is now serviced. And hopefully that screeching noise will go away. Now what I need to do is reinstall this into the car. Before I reinstall it, I'm just going to test it and demonstrate it. Right. Okay, now you've got to switch on the car. But make sure the... Make sure you hold this or turn the... the um, the aircon off the blower how you do that off on this car you will see there's an off button here uh, zero You're right so I'm just gonna put the camera back on facing on the blower okay let's hold it Okay, got to turn the ignition one time. Right. Hold the blower. Careful fingers. Right. There's no grinding anymore. Sorry, that's me on the car and you can see that even though I wobble it, it's not grinding. Right, switch it off, time to reinstall. Switch the car off, unplug it, I mean, and uh, take out the key. Okay, to reinstall the blower, what you need to do is, to, uh, let's get this, uh, Right, we've got one, two, three, four screws. When you're working on a BMW or a Mercedes, get yourself a Torx screwdriver set. It will come in handy. Okay, this screw is size T20. Now what you got to do is you kind of got to get on your back, get upside down. The blower goes this way. You got to get it in there, align these screws, uh, screw holes, install it, screw it in. Then you got to plug in this guy here. Then that's done. Right. Obviously I'm not going to be able to show it. Then you need to put this cap on. This cover. You the cover's got clips on the one side, so you clip it first, which is at the back, I think. Uh, maybe, let me just see. Okay, I'm not sure, I'll tell you afterwards. You've got these clips here, and screw, 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 screw. You put the cover on, very important. Then, once you've got the cover on, you may want to change the carbon filter at this point i will do a video on how to change this carbon filter actually um yeah because the carbon filter is right next to it there are two of them carbon block filters all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to install the blower but i'm going to get upside down i'm going to be in the way of the camera almost the whole time So, screw there, screw there, screw there, there, then you need to just plug it back in, over there, with this, over there. 
while I'm here I'm showing you there's the carbon block filter one and two you, un you unclip that you slide it put the carbon block in there right put the cap back on there it's on plug it in sits on the aircon blower hear it, but there's no wearing sound anymore. The motor has now been serviced. That's the end of the video. Polystyrene, which is also directional. Like that, it fits in. And there's two clips at the bottom for it. If you have a look, one and two. Now we need to put this uh, baffling on. The foam is the top side. And it clips into here. There are clips here. If you look here, you see there's a slide, a slide, and there's a recess, a recess for it. So we just slide it in to these gaps. And yeah, there we go. See. It fits in there now that thing you can now close this carpeting area and now we just need to put screw and screw One and two. There you go. And that's how you close the covering for the blower.